Welcome back to the Mix Academy. I'm David Glenn. In today's video, we're looking at the guitars. We're continuing our series from good to great, looking at the mixing enhancement techniques that I've used to mix the song around here by the band Navigate. Again, shout out to my man, Justin Nice. Incredibly awesome dude. And uh, thanks to him for letting us share the, the tracks in the Mix Academy, the tutorials with you guys here. Links in the description to check out the band. They've released uh, three or four now with my help. And uh, Justin's been incredible every step of the way. So thanks to him. Thanks to them. Here we go. Looking at the guitars, we've got some automation to talk about. We've got a couple of plugins that I'm going to feature and kind of show off as uh, go tos for me. One specifically, um, Telefy, my man Jordan Valeria over at Hardcore Music Studio, uh, created Black Salt Audio. We're going to look at that. And then just automation moves. So whether you have that plugin or Waves Magma BB tubes or any of that or not, my hope is that you're going to take away the concepts from this. And then whatever plugins you use, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a blast. So let's start out. We've got these intro guitars here where the intro kind of hits and then it dies down to these filtered guitars. A lot of this was me producing in the mix, thinking through arrangement options and ideas, panning left left, right, doing what we do in the mix, try to create something special. This is a pair of guitars. Actually, we got three guitars that I filtered and then kind of brought back to life a little bit. We'll show that. Here is the intro and then the three guitars we're looking at. So a little bit of character at the beginning of the track. And if we play these guitars with no processing. Too muddy, right? Ultimately, we needed these to stand out a little bit more. And so I filtered them and my go-to plugin recently has been Telefy for that. Black Salt Audio. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, it will be an affiliate link, but uh, again, this has been something I've been rocking. It, this is multiple plugins in one. If you need to filter, you got to pull up an EQ. If you need to um, shape that with a tilt EQ, you got to have another EQ or another band within the EQ. You got a compressor, you got saturation, and then you've got your slap delay. All kind of the sound of that radio effect or the the telephone vocal i do this all the time and start with fab filter and you got the telephone preset and then you hit compression and this is all built into one plugin so certainly uh something that i've gone to over the years is when a plugin makes my job easier or gets to a result faster i'm sold and jordan definitely delivered with this those guys over at black salt audio are killing it here is my setting so we start out with this guitar nice and fat and chubby and all that good stuff sounds good, but for that part, I wanted it to be thinner. I wanted it to cut. Here's the Telefy preset. For me, tuning that to the song, I wanted a little bit less of that 1K. Um, and then this part continues when the vocalist is singing, so I wanted to dip that down a little bit. It's where the, the vocalist frequency range is really gonna live in that 800 to 2K range. Uh, so we got a little bit of a touch up, a little bit of EQ. And then I felt like after, um, I, I, I'm lying, I said I felt, my buddy Joey Fernandez, my mastering engineer, one of my best friends, put ears on the song and he was like, you know, those intro guitars are kind of weird. <laughs> He's like a little thin, a little bit too eh. And so uh, I went back. He said, I think he might have said something about maybe some tube, maybe some saturation. Uh, so credit where it's due. Joey hooked me up with the the idea to come back in here and and uh, improve it. And so I thought, well, Waves just released the the Magma. This is quite a while that I did this mix. And uh, so I pulled up the Magma BB tubes. Just a great plugin, man. They did an incredible job. The thing that I love was this bass relief. You you boost the beauty, boost boost the beast. Um, get your wet knob, your wet dry knob thing happening. But then. Uh, maybe it's a little chunky. And so you just pull in this bass relief and it cleans it up nicely. Really digging this plug in. Here is without it. Again, kind of thin and whatever. We went from a little too tubby to now a little bit too small, too thin. And then here's without it and then I'll put it back in. A 
Back out. So there's certainly a volume difference thing happening there, but hopefully you can also hear it's it's filling it out. It's giving it a nice bit of fullness back. So kind of a meet in the middle between the two. Love what that was doing. So Telefy and Waves Magma BB tubes. Same exact thing here, I'm pretty sure, on the left side. Maybe a, another little bit of a dip there. But yeah, same exact settings. So left guitar, right guitar. Same thing. Now I did automate that. Um, or excuse me, choose to pan the first one right, the first one left. I think they had it all just right down the middle when it first came to me, but small potatoes. Moving on, this one gave a little more love to you. So let's say you have your rhythm left, your rhythm right, and then you have a solo guitar. You have a vocal, you have whatever going on. Typically, it doesn't sound very interesting, we'll say, to have all the same guitar, all the same amp, all the same tones, right? You're going to mix it up a little bit to give them their own character so that they stand out. Um, so in this case, to get this lead kind of ish lick to stand out a little bit. That's the original. I threw Telefy on again, slightly different settings. We're going a little bit more of the notched vibe here. Okay, and then EQ again, taming the harshness up top, making sure that we control it a little bit. It got a little out of hand with Telefy. Pulling back some of the fatness, which I'm then gonna put back in, but it's a little different. Pulling out low mids, so here's that. Without it. You can hear back to raw is certainly too full, too fat, doesn't fit in the mix. So now we're gonna move on. We got VMR. Again, I wasn't lying in the last video when I said I'm loving the London. That's my go-to. If I need more, I go to the New York, but this one, love it. Saturation, and so just a little bit more. I'm gonna turn off that delay and we'll pull it in in a second. Kind of muddies it up a little bit, but I don't know. I kind of like it. A little extra saturation. That one's small potatoes. Moving on, I've got the dotted eighth delay thing happening. Quarter on the left, dotted eighth on the right. As a guitarist, this is my go-to delay. Really, it's usually an eighth on the left, dotted eighth on the right. Just my favorite tone. Lots of feedback. Love the way that that, that was a YouTube fan. So the edge, the whole dotted eighth thing. So now that gives it a little more character sitting down the middle. Here's the three together. Okay, and remember we started with a much muddier sound. Yep, so now we go to the magma and without it, with it. Showing off the intro guitars, we brightened them up, we thinned them out. Let's hear when that third one comes in. Pay attention to how it's got a little bit more of a nasally tone, a little more of that upper mid-range character. Cool. And then that's kind of underlined. I would even say, I think I wrestled with pulling that level back and forward just kind of, but I was like, man, you miss a part that they took time to, to create. Uh, so ended up having that in the mix, but let's come out here. The one we just looked at the kind of thinner guitar. I wanted something special. We got this little drop at the end. So I didn't want that to sound the exact same as the intro. So what we did is I automated the EQ that is currently not on. I turned it off for showing off the other stuff. Remember I was telling you about the telephone? Phone preset in the FabFilter Pro Q3 and then I'll often tweak it to taste and it ends up becoming like a spaghetti mess of EQ by the time I'm done with it. But here, not too bad. We got a little bit of a dip at 3K. We got the filters. So let's take a listen. This is... Uh, with the end. So here in solo. Cool. Without it. A little too full, right? And so I wanted this drop section.
just creating interest, right? Something different. Give the ear a little bit something different to uh, to help the song. The delay here, I turned off. I just wanted that to be a nice tight part. I got a couple other things I want to show you in this video. We've got a guitar out here. Cool little section. We're rocking. And then it all kind of drops out and it goes to this one guitar. I panned it off to the right. This one I'm using the VSC. Verb Suite Classics from Slate Digital. The uh, FG480 room, small wooden room, 690 milliseconds. I've left that all alone. I don't know if I touched this stuff. Small lush guitar room. I may have just pulled this up. I definitely played with the dry wet blend, but here is this section and this part without it. So Obviously that's too loud, but that part came in and I thought, man, that would sound awesome to have like it's a guitar cab in a room, just give it a little space. And so I chose that, showed it to you already, the FG 480 small wooden room. And it sounds like this. It only comes in for this section. You never thought you'd get this far. Kind of takes a definition out of the guitar a little bit to create some interest and separate it. It's kind of a common theme from what I've said the last couple of uh, looking at this stuff is uh, creating interest. We're just trying to create ear candy, right? C create something that's unique. Let's take a look at these. What did I do with this guitar? We got a little bit of something happening here. Right on. So we got that interest, right? We're creating interest again, pulling this swell up. I'm raising the level of the guitar there, but I'm also sending it to a verb. So that splash is spilling out. Right Before it comes in. Now, you know what? It might have been clip gain. It's not clip gain. There it is right there. This guitar track is the level. So this right here I'm using for the level. This one I'm using to send and spill out into a verb. So it carries over when we got that dead stop. Got a, got a nice little ambience that kind of spills over. This one here is the volume automation. So here you go. Here's without it. Let's turn it off. There's without it. Let's turn it back on in solo. Right? Love it. So now in the context of the track, here's off. That's not completely. Let's turn this off. And that had another sound that came in and swelled in. But now let's listen with the lift. Love it, man. Some nice little moves here and there to create character, create some movement, some some interest. There we go. I'm going to thumbnail. Create interest in the mix. So there we go. Uh, let's see. Was there anything else I want to show you guys? So obviously, a couple edits here and there. We had this stuff was uh, continuing on. I broke that other one down to another track. But let's take a listen. If you have this stuff all hanging over, what that sounds like. Let me show off the edits. It just didn't make sense, right? So put those back. And give that snare fill that we showed in the drums video. If you haven't seen that one, definitely check it out. Link in the description. And uh, yeah, so some edits there, some drops. And then there's one last thing, kind of a bonus tip I want to show you for the guitars. It affects the guitars. And that's my all music bus. We're going to look at it when we go to the... Uh, when we get to the mix bus, I've got the vocal video coming to you next and then the stereo bus after that. But for the sake of full disclosure with the guitars, I have in my mix template, depends on the song, the genre, this one going for that hyper real sound. I've got some extra width. I've got 35% added with the isotope of ozone imager. And uh, it's across the board, not multiband, across the board. Everything that goes to my all music bus, which would be guitars, keys, synths, pads, any of that kind of stuff, is going to be pushed out 35% from the very beginning of my mix process. Then I've got one that I'm automating, an extra 25 to whatever the heck I want percent at the chorus. And so if I command control click on the bypass, you'll see here the all music bus. We've got a couple sections where I've written automation. 
And that's where that plugin is gonna kick in. When I click in this little section here, you're gonna see it turns on. So now at the chorus, the bridge, the other choruses, those guitars are now not only gonna get louder because there's a little bit of a loudness jump that happens with the, the imager, unless you don't want there to be, but I, I like there to be. So there's a little bit of a loudness jump and it gets wider. So uh, check that out. We'll turn it off. No one seems to remember what my name is. Nothing ever. Okay, so it's not bad. The arrangement kind of takes care of itself. You get you get the guitars that come in. They're, they're loud enough in the mix, so you feel that. Now take a listen and see what you, uh, what you think about this with the added width that automates on at the one of the chorus. No one seems to remember what my name is. Nothing ever happens around Okay, there's one last thing. Again, I'm going to share this in the, the mix bus video, but I'm boosting the mix bus volume. So at the beginning of the mix, I drop the fader minus one for my stereo bus. Final limiter, clipper into a limiter. We'll go over that in the mix bus video. I'm dropping it minus one. So that whole intro, first verse, everything is actually one dB quieter than if I weren't using this trick. But then at the chorus, I'm going to send it back to zero. So I'm going to put it back up one dB and you get the lift from the all music bus. It's going to shoot it out wide. But then you also get the volume jump at the chorus. Creates this awesome effect. Let's turn that off and just hear this. Uh, actually, let's turn both of them off and you'll hear the chorus just kind of happen. But no one seems to remember what my name is. Nothing ever happened. So again, you got a good arrangement. You got some cool guitars that happen. There's things that come in, but as a mixer, man, our job to, to enhance it and take it even further. Now check this out. But no one seems to remember what my name is. So that just gives you that extra punch in the face when it gets to the chorus. Now we got a little bit of a distinguished uh, difference between the verse, the pre-chorus, and the chorus. Just kind of jumps out of the speakers, and uh, I can't recommend that enough. I do it all the time. Pop, rock, hip-hop, R&B, you name it. If the chorus needs to jump and be bigger, that's a trick that I'm doing. And it's not always 1 dB. Sometimes it's just half a dB down at the beginning, and then half a dB, half a dB back up. Maybe there's a song where I'll pull it down the dB, go up half a dB at the pre-chorus to give a little lift, and then back up to zero, that extra half dB for the chorus. It all depends, and uh, there you go. So kind of some trickery in there, some cool settings. Take that. Love the... Uh, showing you guys that hopefully you dig it and uh, tell you what hey you enjoy this with the guitars we're not done this series from good to great we're going to move on in the next video i'm going to open this lead vocal whoop, little teaser and we're going to look at the uh delay throws the saturation throws all kinds of cool effects to show you and i'm going to take you there is it right there yep click right here you're going to see that video i'll see you guys over there